So I want to move just briefly into kind of a solar system 101. Um, so just the overall layout of the solar system is here. So we've got our inner terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Um, the terrestrial planets, Mercury and Venus, they don't have any moons. Earth has one, of course. Mars has two, but they're very small. So Phobos and Deimos. Um, it's likely that these are actually captured asteroids. So something that can happen, this is not to scale, by the way, obviously, uh, but Jupiter's gravitational interactions can basically kick asteroids out of the asteroid belt. And this is why many of the asteroids that come near Earth come near Earth. Otherwise, they'd just be, you know, living their best lives out here in the asteroid belt. But if Jupiter kicks an asteroid out and it happens to come close enough to a planet and at the right velocity to enter into a stable orbit, then it can become a moon. So that's probably how Mars acquired its two moons. There are other ways that you can acquire a moon, right? So um, in the early solar system, it was a very violent place. Lots of collisions were taking place and it's hypothesized that our moon formed when a collision between Earth and another protoplanet um, sloughed off a huge chunk and basically that chunk froze into the moon and, you know, so there's bits and pieces of both the original Earth and that um, the colliding object, which I can't remember the name of, in both bodies. So we can look at the composition of both bodies to get evidence for that story. So there's different ways that planets end up with moons. Um, moving on out here, so past the asteroid belt, um, we've got our, all of our so-called gas giants, as we learned, maybe liquid giants is a more uh, appropriate term for that. And they have many large moons as well. And as we'll see later in the class, some of these moons might have actually formed in place around the planets while the planet was forming. So almost like a mini solar system, uh, which is pretty sweet. Um, so all of the gas giants actually have rings, even though they're not all shown on this diagram. But Saturn obviously has the most spectacular rings, the ones that you remember and think of. Um, the other rings around these planets are much smaller in terms of their mass and also their size. So they're not quite as spectacular. And then finally, beyond those gas giants, we've got our Kuiper belt. And that's where uh, most of our um, dwarf planets are. Uh, and then far beyond that, not shown here, is something called the Oort cloud. I'll get to that in a second. Oh, right now. So the Oort cloud is um, a big spherical distribution that contains many comets. So uh, this is, you know, not in the same pattern as all of the other um, objects in the solar system where, you know, even Pluto's orbit, even though it's inclined, is relatively close to the solar system plane. Um, so the Kuiper belt it is within that orbit. So most of the, you know, uh, dwarf planets are relatively close to the solar plane, but the Oort cloud is spherical. That's not close to the solar plane at all, right? Um, there is a higher density of object Oort cloud near the plane, but lots of them off axis as well. And so these comets were, you know, possibly um, uh, thrown into the Oort cloud by gravitational interactions, um, and they might have formed in place as well. So these Comets are little kind of dirty uh, snowballs, so icy, but with a little bit of other heavier elements within them.